Hi. Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food Explorers. Today we're going to check out Mahi Ai Table in Foodland Farms. In Kapolei. Let's go! Foodland Farms is located right across the parking lot from the Kamakana Ali'i Mall. On the same side as Jollibee. Inside Foodland Farms is a sit-down restaurant called Mahi Ai Table. As you walk in, it's located to the right. If you pass the Poke Station, you went too far. They offer a farm-to-table cuisine using many locally sourced products. Their kids' menu is also pretty sweet and comes with crayons for coloring. So first we want to point out um, on the line everyone that plastic straws are no longer allowed here uh, in Hawaii. Uh, this restaurant offers biodegradable straws made with agave. So I thought uh, that was interesting. And hopefully it's better than paper straws because paper straws quite honestly suck. <laughs> so, the child's gonna try his pineapple juice. Mmm! Delicious? It's good. It's delicious. Tastes like pineapple? I got a pineapple slice. It's, it's, it's very delicious and a little bit more delicious. <laughs> I got the Aloy cooler. And it has sweetly vodka, shiro, aloe liqueur, <laughs> fresh mint, fresh cucumber, and tonic. So in Hawaii, we call it aloe, but I think the rest of the world calls it apple. This is a very nice, light, refreshing flavor. The aloe is prominent, minty. Cucumber. <laughs> tastes good. Yeah. Very light, clean flavor. Uh, I like the mint. And this is the. Uh, the Mahiai Old Fashion. It's Old Pali Road Whiskey. Jameson Cast Meat Stout Edition. Angostura Bitters. It's like an old fashioned. <laughs> Can you taste the old Kali Road whiskey? Um, you can taste the whiskey, but because of the blend, it's not as prominent as some other brands. It has a little bit more burn than some other brands that they use. But oh well, it's a it's a it's a good old fashioned. I'm not a whiskey drinker. But this is pretty good. I like this one. Yeah. So they have a pretty good kids menu here. So the child ordered the kids pizza for himself. And it has uh, some tomato sauce and five blend mozzarella cheese. Ready? Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. cheesy? Mm -hmm. Two thumbs up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Okay, good job. So for an appetizer, um, he chose the vanilla clams. Uh, garlic, lemongrass, jalapenos. It comes with hand-cut fries and a chili aioli. And ketchup. I'm not sure if the chili aioli goes with the clams. It probably goes with the fries. I think it's meant for the fries. Yeah. I'll try the chili aioli. The fry itself is good. The chili and the aioli is kind of like an after kick. It's not spicy initially, but after you swallow it, then you can kind of feel the burn a little. It has a flavor of chili pepper flakes and stuff. 
Doesn't really have a burn. Has a slight heat after, but the taste of chili peppers. Okay. Not, not the heat, the taste of it, the flavor. Mac and cheese. Like ketchup. We're gonna go with like all of it. It's in like a garlic butter uh, broth. Um, I'll taste the broth after. Try the plant now. Nicely cooked. The broth has a nice blend. The clam juice, butter, tastes like a little wine and some garlic. Um, All together, it tastes pretty good. It's cooked well. I like that. Yeah. You do need to get some of that sauce in here, though. Yeah, don't forget about that broth. Dip your fries in it, too. <laughs> I wonder how many clams are in here. It's like close to. We'll um, let you know. I would say maybe 12 <laughs> to 15 pounds. Alright, next up, we got the house made falafel burger. This thing is a pretty thick falafel patty. Uh, it says it's cauliflower giardiniera. Giardiniera? <laughs> giardiniera. <laughs> Tzatziki slaw, Latour Bakehouse bun. Yeah, so made in Hawaii, button. Yeah, potato bun. Uh, so looks like there's a coleslaw inside. Oh, oh the cauliflower thing is underneath the falafel patty. Scat. <laughs> nice and crispy. Falafel has a good flavor. It kind of falls apart easily though. But I think after a couple of bites, you probably need a fork. Well, it's good texture, but yeah. uh, for, as far as a burger goes, I mean, it's a little crumbly. No, but the flavor is good. If you don't mind using a fork and knife after a couple of bites, then. Yeah. You know, I'd give this a try, definitely. I mean, I typically don't like cauliflower either, but I don't even really notice it on this. Next up is the Hamakua Farms Aligi Mushroom Pizza. And it has arugula, broccolini, garlic confit, Sweetland Farm Gouda, and preserved lemon honey. Sounds good. The cheese is definitely the star of this one. Very flavorful cheese. Good crunch for the broccoli. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you hit that mushroom, it's so good. It's so fresh. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. Distinct mushroom flavor, mm -hmm. that's for sure. But I like the contrast, the crunch from the broccolini, and the the cheese is just outstanding. I believe Sweetland Farms is here in, in Hawaii, right? I think so. I know the mushrooms are, Kamakua Farms, are the mushrooms are. So this is their hand-cut pasta on their entree section. It has house-made pork ragu, baby peas, mint, Sweetland Farm, this is also good. The pork ragu is very distinct, very distinguished mm -hmm. flavor. The pasta is nice and has a nice. What do you do? Like Al dente. A, yeah, it's perfectly cooked. <laughs> yeah, definitely, the pasta is good. Mm -hmm. The other ingredients kind of get lost though with the pork ragu. The pork ragu has a very strong flavor. Yeah, I kind of don't really taste the supersada too much when you're mixing it with the other stuff. Yeah. But On its own, it's okay. Yeah. But it does blend 
kind of nicely. You get a little bit of saltiness from the suprasada. I don't get much from the peas when you eat it all together. I think the peas are more like a garnish. I mean, it's good for color. <laughs> yeah. For but as far as the flavor of it, I'm not really getting a lot. Because the pork ragu has a very strong, bold flavor. Yeah, but it's really good. This is a good dish. Yeah, the pasta is done really well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pork is definitely really good. This is the braised short rib local mo. So it has a house rice blend. Looks like seeds. <laughs> Looks like a mix between white and brown rice um, with some great, uh, whole grains in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, onion gravy, uh, sunny side egg. You can get it with Beyond Meat instead of the braised short rib if you like that kind of things. And fried onions. We also appreciate the fact that the egg is an actual over easy egg and has the runny yolk with it. <laughs> Sunny side egg. Sunny side. Such a good flavor. Everything just kind of melds so nicely together on this one. The rice, the meat, the egg. Mm. Oh, this is very good. Um, it's not as heavy as a regular local mofo. The very short rib is so tender. Mm -hmm. With great flavor to this. Nice and soft. He's getting a little bit of everything in one bite. And these fried onions, very crisp. Yeah. Everything just works so well together on this one. Yeah, at first I thought the onion gravy was going to be really strong, because usually onion gravy really has a strong taste. This one works really well. Yeah. Very, very satisfied with this. Okay, so we're kind of doing things in reverse a little bit here, because we have a salad. But we're doing it last. <laughs> so it's the charred wonbok cabbage salad and it has white anchovy, parmesan, and an anchovy dressing. So it seems like it's some kind of take on like a Caesar salad. And instead of romaine, there's a wonbok cabbage. And the nice thing about this, they don't try to hide the anchovy. There's two nice fillets right on top. Yeah. I cut mine a little large. Huh. So it's kind of like only really the tips of the one buck is charred. Um, I don't really see any, uh, there's a little bit, on, very little on the rest of it. I thought I wasn't gonna like this because I thought it was just gonna taste like burn. <laughs> but, but it's actually really good. Well, it offsets the taste of the anchovy a little bit. Yeah. So it's. It gives you a little bit different um, taste than you're normally used to with the char. Mm -hmm. And here in Hawaii, we love to grill. So, you know, we grill a lot of vegetables and things, and we do get some char sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of kind of reminiscent about, you know, making a salad at the beach or something, you know, with hibachi. Yeah, using the wanbok as a replacement for romaine actually works. I'm pretty surprised at this one. My only gripe is that the very bottom of the wanbok, is a little tough compared to a romaine. So I'm trying to cut through it and it is rather hard. Yeah, I think if that the end part or the bottom of the cabbage would have was charred a little more, then it might be a little softer, but the flavor is still good. And then once you get it in your mouth, it's not that hard to chew. Mm -hmm. This is a great salad. Mm -hmm. um, generally, like when you eat a Caesar salad, you don't, even if you ask with anchovies, you don't really get that anchovy flavor, right? Yeah. This would be a great starter. Um, and I would suggest getting this and the clams mm -hmm. and sharing. Yeah. Um, because both of them are excellent. I would just suggest coming here with as many people that are allowed and get everything and try it. <laughs> <laughs> So far, everything here has, has a very distinct flavor. Mm -hmm. um, nothing really disappointing. And it's really nice to see them using local ingredients. And it shows 
in the presentation mm -hmm. and it shows in the taste because yeah. a lot of these things are very fresh tasting. Yeah, it's definitely like a farm to table type of feel because yeah. they do try to use as many local products as possible. Yeah. And you can taste it in the food. You can taste the difference. Oh, by far, yes. We have uh, a little malasadas or their version of malasadas mm -hmm. with, I believe it was a lily koi something sauce. Yeah. <laughs> the malasada coolers or I don't know how you pronounce that. But for scale, this is what it looks like. They're actually texture-wise, it's pretty soft when you pick it up. Yeah, this is definitely a lily koi um, base sauce. So the child's gonna try it. Do you want to put the sauce or not? Lean over. Mm. It is good. Is it soft? Mm -hmm. Is it crunchy? Mm -hmm. Oh. Just by holding it in my hand, it's still nice and warm, so freshly fried. Okay, so this is a stretch for me because I don't like malasadas. And the reason I don't like malasadas is because I don't like all this granulated sugar on the outside of the donut. Yeah, I'm going to try it first without the sauce. If it were some other type of sugar, for me personally, I would have uh, probably liked it a lot more. But for you know, for me, I just don't like granulated sugar on pastries. Lily koi sauce is outstanding, but a little goes a long way with yeah, this thing. I, def I wouldn't dunk the whole thing, yeah. just definitely kind of touch the tip of it. I really appreciate the fact that it's, you know, freshly made. Yeah. Um, it makes a big difference in terms of texture because you do get that crunchy outside, fluffy inside, uh, nice and warm. I kind of prefer it to, you know, compared to regular mm -hmm. size. And the thing with this is that it may look like a lot, a lot of sugar, but it's not really, really, really sweet. Um, it's not super sweet, um, but again, for me, I just don't like the texture. <laughs> of the granulated sugar, mm -hmm. but it's definitely not overly sweet at all. We have an ube pie here. It looks like a homemade pie and it has taro chips and sweet potato chips on here um, with some whipped cream and like a coconut omelet. Okay. You want to try the chip first or do you want to just go? Well, I know what taro chips taste like and I love them. And these could be um, locally made. Maybe the Hawaii it, Chip Company one? It looks like it is from the Hawaii Chip yeah. Company. Yeah. Okay, so we got that ube filling, a nice graham cracker crust, a um, little bit of that coconut oil in the bottom, and some whipped cream on the top. This is actually pretty good. The texture of the ube pie is really good. This is another stretch for me because I don't care for ube. <laughs> And I don't like coconut. <laughs> so. Yeah. The coconut is very strong. You don't need a lot. Just whatever kind of touches it. The ube, the texture itself is pretty good. It's slightly firm, but not hard. It's not bad. It, it really isn't. The coconut is lingering though. <laughs> if it wasn't for the coconut, for me personally, I probably would have liked it more. Uh, but the ube pie is actually pretty nice. It's a nice consistency. The I, coconut is yeah. strong. You know? The coconut is strong. I kind of like it a little more than I thought I would. I thought I was going to hate this one, actually. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not bad. You can't go wrong with taro chips. Taro chips are delicious. Hi. 
Hey, we're in our wrap up room to wrap it up again. <laughs> First up, if you like my hat, it's from Major League Clothing. And they actually have a retail location at the Kamakana Ali'i Mall, which is right across from Foodland Farm. So you can go there and pick one up yourself, and we'll put their link in the description below. For a mahiai table, we have heard that it's best to make a reservation. When we went, it wasn't too bad. We just walked in, but uh, it can get pretty crazy. So you might want to make a reservation to be safe if you plan on going there. Our only uh, regret <laughs> is that we didn't have more people to share with so that we could try more items on the menu. We tried too many men <laughs> menu yeah. items. It it's very hearty it's very filling um which has is completely separate from the taste but even if it doesn't look as big as some of the other places it sure does fill you up mm -hmm. we were pleasantly surprised i mean for a restaurant that's inside a grocery store it's very well done mm -hmm. <laughs> so the ambiance the food everything is just so nice we we're pleasantly surprised by our experience there the wait staff is nice management you know, management was nice and it's just one of those things that make you want to go back mm -hmm. again and, and the the topper is they're using local ingredients mm -hmm. they're trying to promote local agriculture yes which is always a good thing. So it's definitely as close to farm to table as you can get. They get them from local sources and use them in the restaurant. And with that, it's time for the word of the day. <laughs> Today's word is farm. Farm. Like farmer? Farm. Like to farm? A farm. Easiest way to say it is famu. 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 Or nojo. But m you can get away with saying famu. Famu. But just to let you know, many ways to say farm, <laughs> depending on what you're talking about. Uh, farm in Hawaiian is mahiai. Ha, ah, what a coincidence. <laughs> like the place we went to. That's why it's called Mahi Ai Table. Ah. Their spin on saying farm to table. Learn something every day, huh? <laughs> and that's a wrap for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like our video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment down below, let us know what you think. Let us know if there's anything you want us to check out, and we'll see you next time!